guys, welcome back. Today's the day we're gonna test for asbestos. Got an asbestos home testing kit from Amazon for 30 pounds. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be the answer to our asbestos nightmares. We've got instruction, pre-labeled bag, inner sample bag and the outer sample bag. Because obviously if the sample that we take is asbestos, it needs to be bagged up properly. You haven't watched the previous video. Basically we found that there was a leak in the ceiling near the front door and it was just dripping quite rapidly onto the floor. But um, people said to investigate it properly, go from underneath, like just cut into the ceiling. But obviously we don't know if there's asbestos in the ceiling, so we can't just go and willy nilly cut it as we could cause some serious damage to our own health. Spray it with water to dampen it. Take the sample with a, a um, sharp chisel, scrape a good size off. Also, you're meant to be suited and booted when doing this. So I am going to put on my goggles, a big mask. I don't have like a PPE head to toe kit so I'm actually just gonna like make one out of a plastic bag guess what we got an email yesterday with our asbestos test results and there is no asbestos in the sealant samples that we sent off so I am going to take that as the green flag to cut into the sealant so that we can see where this leak was coming from but yeah that's really good news isn't it I'm so happy oh I'm so tired today some friends came around and they didn't leave till a little bit earlier um a little bit later <laughs> So I didn't really get much sleep. I wanna see how the best way to go into the leak is. The leak's happening on the ceiling. How do I get into it? Like, do I need to go and buy a certain ceiling knife that gets into like the Artex and the plasterboard? Should I be using my mini circular saw? Should I be using a jigsaw, a normal saw, a Stanley blade? You know, I need to find out the best way to get in so that we can inspect, because that is what we're trying to do. We're gonna to inspect today. We haven't, the leak stopped by the way. It hasn't been leaking for about a week now. The only thing we have stopped using is is the toilet so something leads me to believe that what fills the toilet is leaking but yeah we're gonna go in from underneath and see where the leak is coming from today Baby. We have found the leak. <laughs> Did you hear me say I found it? Yeah. I think it's up here. Do you want to come have a look? But it seems to be like a, a corner joint. There's definitely a pipe there. There's definitely a pipe there. But can you see it? It's likely that, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's gotta be. So this square that I've cut is exactly where that leak was. This isn't a leak. This is where I took an asbestos sample and painted over it to seal it just in case it was asbestos. But if you look in here, we've got some electrical wires and then this looks like the culprit. Guys, I'm so happy that we have found the leak. I know we haven't found the source necessarily, but the leak, we have found it. So if anything, if worse comes to worse, we can't really figure out where the pipe leads to. If we can just fix that joint and make sure it doesn't leak anymore, we're, we're laughing, you know, I'm so, so happy. Anyway, I'm about to cook some food. Um, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this part of the video. I'm buzzing about today's meal, look. Today we have got Indonesian style coconut chicken curry with courgette and zesty rice. This is what I mean about HelloFresh, right? Because I'm not someone that would normally put courgette in my food. Like I'm really basic when it comes to cooking on my own. Like it's given uninspirational. This, however, is given inspirational. So that's today's meal. We've actually already had two of our meal boxes. So last night we had the hot chick, 10, 10. So, so good. Even the salad was so tasty. The dressing on that salad was banging. And then the other night we had the sweet and sour pineapple chicken. Pineapple and chicken, I don't know what it is. Pineapple with like savory foods just hits differently. But yeah, it's just so simple. This is all I'm gonna cook with. So this is number 37. I match it to the card that I get. 
everything is in here pre-portioned for me I don't need to stress and then on my card obviously it looks lovely it tells me what ingredients that I need and then it tells me how to cook it as well so there are pictures there's word by word text and then it's also got all of our nutritional value stuff in here as well so so super simple we like to mix and match stuff so um we will get some things like high protein customer favorites sometimes rapid meals sometimes calorie conscious meals there are so many categories to choose from which is what I love and also we get three meals every week for two people but based on the size of your family or how many meals you want a week you can definitely customize that for you which is perfect if you didn't know but I'm sure you do HelloFresh is a subscription based service where you get your recipe boxes every single week delivered to your door if you are away for a week you can skip that so that you're not going to lose out you can choose your meals that you want every single week or you can let HelloFresh choose them for you but honestly you will never be disappointed because they be hidden. Today I'm excited because I've got such a good discount code for previous customers as well as new. You heard right, previous customers. You can use this code too. I know. I know. So for your first box, you'll get 60% off and then your next two boxes, you will get 25% off and that is until the end of March. So make sure that you go and use that code because it obviously runs out. I'm gonna put it on screen here for you. There's a QR code as well, so you can just zap that with your phone and I'll put all of the links and the rest of the description in the box for you as well. But honestly, shout out to HelloFresh because that is a deal. That is a good, good deal. Go and use that code. But anyway, I'm about to make this. And then after we've eaten that, we're gonna go and tackle the problem again. Right, I am, whoa. I've got my phone, I've got my torch. I'm gonna to stick it in the hole with the torch and take a video and see if I can see where it's going. So I'll just take a few seconds, I'll turn it around and I can have a look at that later on and see if that looks like anything at all. But I've got Rob upstairs, so Rob, yeah. You can turn the turn the tap on. Which one are you turning on? The ensuite. Ensuite sink. Ensuite sink. I'm gonna put my hand on the pipe Wrong and way. yeah, go. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, it's definitely the sink. Definitely. Yeah. Do you wanna come feel it? It was all a lie, guys. It was all a lie. She lied. Guys. Please, can someone tell me what is going on? I thought I just found where the pipe was leaking. I've just turned around. I'm gonna put a picture here. I've just turned around and thought, let me just look at the, the other direction and like see what's in the floorboard just for banter. Please tell me where there is a fully collapsed pipe. A fully collapsed pipe. Oh, that wastewater is going straight into the floorboards. <laughs> Is this a sick joke? <laughs> There's just water just running straight into the floorboard. What the hell? <laughs> oh my God. There is a pipe and then there's a, the half of the pipe and they just don't touch. On the floor, is that dump? Is that dump on the floor? There's so much dirt. Okay, so it's somewhere under like here that the pipes are disconnected. So we're gonna have to probably pry up some of the floorboards to get at the pipe and see if it reconnects. I'm just so baffled, Where, why, what pipe could this possibly be? I don't even think we'd be able to tell from the bathroom. The back of the sink looks to be the correct size. I can't see past there like where it goes because of the tile. And then the main bath, again, I don't know where that goes because I can't see, so we might have to cut the caulk we might have to cut the silicone and pull that off the wall again in case we need to like find the proper source of this issue. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. I've ripped up the carpet. The floorboard looks good to be fair. The floorboard, it goes underneath the banister and underneath the skirting. So you can't just lift any of them out. So I'd either have to cut some or the other option would be to guess 
where pipes disconnect. Do you know what? Looking at it now though, it's a pretty hefty crack. Hey, can you see that line across there? And it's quite yellowed. It's all cracked and it's quite yellowed. And that isn't far off where I think they've uh, collapsed, to be honest. So that might be an indication of where we could cut if we go in from underneath. Oh, I'm getting all confused now. I'm gonna make a cup of tea and come back for a break because it's too much for my head right now. I'm just gonna step away, come up with a plan instead of just attacking stuff and ripping carpet up like I just did. Although, I think I'm just gonna rip it all up. That underlay is pretty disgusting and that floorboard, I feel like that would look quite nice painted. What do you think? Shall I paint the floorboard? Okay, let's put it in this video so that we can make it a future video. Should I leave the carpet in place or shall I rip it up, remove the spikes on the edges, sand it down a little bit and either stain it, although a lot of it is quite water damaged, or we could paint it. We could even paint it like a bright white or we could paint it something fun like a sage green. I wouldn't go dark, but I would stain it darker. Um, let me know what you think. Put it in this video if I should rip up the carpet and be done with it and just leave this, the floorboards there for the meantime until we redecorate properly. It's been a couple of hours and I'm baffled. So the pipes still aren't connected. I have no idea how to connect them. What we figured out is that the pipe is running underneath the shower. The pipes are running underneath the shower. We've turned on every single tap individually. We flushed the toilet, filled the sinks to do the overflow and even the overflow in the bath as well just by you know, putting the shower head down it. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna take some time away from that. I'm gonna do some research tonight and if we can't find the reason, we're gonna have to probably get a plumber out to come and have a link, look into it because it was 100, 100, 100% leaking the other day. It has been heavily raining on and off last week or so, last couple of weeks. It also really heavily rained literally like four or five days ago and the water had stopped leaking inside the house. So I don't know, I'm really super confused. Anyway, we're gonna take a break. On a side note, turns out I've come to find that our pots and pans that we've been using to cook are a little bit toxic for us. I don't wanna misconstrue this, but I'm pretty sure that if you have non-stick coated pans and the black flecks off of it, if you ingest that, it's actually really bad for you. Obviously it's not gonna be great, but it can actually be quite bad for you. Anyway, I don't wanna miss quotes, so do your own research, but essentially I'm convinced enough that we need to get new pans, new pots and pans. Now I must admit that I probably have used metal, sharp things, knives on them over time. Can you see, especially in this one, can you see where all of the coating has lifted? So all of that is like deep chippings inside like I can actually feel that the whole coating has come off and that means that we have ingested that at some point, which makes me feel a bit sick. So yeah, I'm heavily convinced that these are just going gone. So I'm gonna be throwing them away because they're not usable anymore. Actually, could be quite cool to maybe, not me trying to figure out a DIY with these. <laughs> um, and then I've got two tea fowl ones, which I think we've bought Bought this one more recently. I think this one's about four years old and this one is probably a bit older at about five years old or something like that. I've definitely had, oh, actually I've definitely had this for a lot longer. I think I've had this for about seven years, you know. Um, but again, you can see the coatings all lifted from it. Yeah, so um, I'm convinced that we're gonna probably get some stainless steel pots and pans. Unfortunately, we don't have a John Lewis near us anymore, which is gutting because apparently their everyday range is phenomenal. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pop to Sainsbury's because they have a habitat. Um, I'll also go over to Asda because they do Scoville stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and apparently Tesco has some good stuff too. We are in Sainsbury's at the moment and they've got their own range for habitat stuff, but I'm not trying to get any of the non-stick coating stuff. And they have got their stainless steel range as well. And this is quite nice because it's got like the spout and then I can't show you at the minute because it's, oh no, you can see there. It's also got the drainage bit there as well. So if you're pouring, it's super easy. But um, people have said that these are quite good actually. And they've also got a set of them for 31, I oh know, 51 pounds for the three pack. So you'll make a bit of a saving if you get the, what do you get? Just three different sizes basically of the stainless steel pots. Also got, this which i saw the other day which i'm obsessed with this griddle um cast iron griddle pan well not a pan griddler also got a griddle pan down here 
and we've got this this casserole dish and it's amazing this was 45 pounds i think this will be really good for steaks prawns uh griddling like vegetables and stuff hi guys okay let's do a little debrief okay just been editing this vlog and i know it is really hectic i honestly cut out so much stuff as well long story short there is a hole in the ceiling the pipes are still disconnected we do not know where that leak came from and we do not know where those disconnected pipes run to we're gonna just leave it i think the best bet for us is tr trying to see by chance one day if it leaks again um and just leaving the ceiling open and we can just kind of figure out where that leak may be coming from and yeah that's it <laughs> that's our best bet also just on the asbestos testing i am super skeptical i don't know why maybe it's because i don't i haven't been able to physically see our sample get tested but there is something about doing like an at-home test kit for me that just isn't sitting right with me i know that i've already gone in and like cut the ceiling and stuff that's fine but i just feel like if we're gonna continue on in the house i've had i've had so much help from you guys saying to me like just because you don't have asbestos in the hallway like just be careful because it doesn't mean that you don't have it elsewhere in the house so we're gonna just pay for a surveyor to come out and check it so you can get asbestos surveys done it is about 300 pounds but i think that 300 pounds would be one of the best sums of money that we will ever spend for peace of mind and for safety of our health so we spoke last night and we just agreed that yeah let's just pay the money it means that if it comes back and they they then say it's negative i will fully believe that and i can diy and we can just do fixes and renovations to our heart's content and if it comes back that we've got asbestos at least we know and we can do it that way also just a little thing to put in here a few of you have mentioned that you can claim back on the home insurance which is something that i didn't know for the asbestos so if we do need to get it removed apparently we can claim that on the ho home insurance and also with leaks as well so because we have that leak we can claim on home insurance yeah you will have to pay an excess i don't know what our excess is but if it's worth it it might be worth doing finally on the pots and pans saga we went to a few shops yesterday they did seem to have nice pots like i would definitely buy especially the habitat ones that i showed you they are actually really nice scoville ones in asda they are great because we actually have two of them and they have been the longest lasting ones for us so we've kept those and we're throwing around away the rest of them but um i just don't want to rush into it apparently you can get different grades of stainless steel when it comes to kitchenware so i just want to do a bit of research and if we want to just see if we want to invest in spending a bit more money to have stuff that's going to last us 25 years yeah i just want to do a bit of research so i'm sure we'll we'll figure that out together at some point and we'll have some lovely new pots and pans to use but yeah that's something i need to do today but anyway i just wanted to wrap up the vlog and say thank you so much for watching yeah sorry that there's not really like a solution to the problem that we had but you know it, it, it's going to happen this is going to happen a lot i guess uh, next video I have no idea what we're going to be doing so we're going to just have to take next week as it comes and see what fun we can get up to there's a lot of stuff to do potentially I actually have started painting my bedroom didn't like the colour so we can come back to it actually um, yeah maybe that's something we'll do anyway thank you so much for watching guys I will see you in the next one take care bye Mwah.